everyone. Welcome to Smash Bros. And we have our opponents here, which is ONU. My name is Era. I'm CQ9, and we are back with some Smashy Bros today. Uh, we have our GLUT conference here. So as you guys can see, we have ONU um, that we are up against today. And it's looking to be a good one. We do have a double header today. Yep. So this match is quite obvious starting at 9, at least 9 our time. Which, we then have another match at 10, so, you know, at the very least we gotta get this game done relatively quick. But they don't take, uh, generally don't take an hour. Please don't prove me wrong on that. <laughs> we have had it happen before, but hopefully this one won't be, so. Get some stage selection and general, uh, about to start kind of, kind of steps. Hey, you know, it has the two in the name. You gotta try it. Of course, yeah. Average, average Smash players going to PS2. Ha. <sighs> ah, oh, Roy. All right. Are you alerted to that fact or no? I feel like you're always more um, aware of the characters that they have. If I remember right, ONU is the one that we didn't really know the character pool. I think it was Trine that we did. So, okay. um, I mean, we just like Roy. Like... <laughs> He, he's a very good character, really, really good character, but he's also just a lot of fun to fight. But uh, Fitz not having the most fun time here, getting kind of stuffed out by these hitboxes, does get a little bit of a combo back, evening out the percents. Get it, um, still keeping it fairly even, 50% versus 42 is nothing to stop at in the long Ooh, gotta watch that hydrant angle. Yeah, Hydrant, when it gets launched, will take the angle of the hitbox that launched it. Um, but it, you also have enough to factor in the actual like hit stun of that move, which is why I think Fitz got caught by that Hydrant, because uh, Roy F Smash has a lot of hit stun. So the Hydrant kind of stayed in place before it launched. But Fitz getting a lot of really good openings and callouts here, getting a little bit of a lead in the percentage. Not a huge amount, but nice Galaga combo really solidifies that percent lead. Just like a lot of nice combos here. Um, and the Roy is kind of stuck in a place where they don't know what to do right now. Mm -hmm. This Roy's doing a lot of uh, just running at Fitz, and he's recognized that very early on and has been has gotten this stock lead for it. So only 60%, not the massivest of lead against Roy, but it is definitely pretty sizable. You can, you can get a lot done on this. Like Fitz is showing with the nice little jab lock. Didn't get much off of it, but very nice nonetheless. Getting side B, but unfortunately side B won't kill there. Yeah, Never mind, back air will. The ledge trump back air, that will steal the sock. Roy back air is just so strong if you get the sweet spot. Which, Roy's sweet spots have priority because he needs it. Yes. <clears throat> he certainly does. But Marth... Screw tippers, they're not real. <laughs> yes. But still, Fitz still has a lot of lead on this. Roy can do a lot of damage, but Fitz can uh, Fitz can avoid a lot of damage pretty well. Ah, uh, wh whiffs the wh the bell combo there. It's not ideal. Oh, no jare for you. Fitz has gotta Fitz has gotta figure out what uh, he's doing with the side bees. Because a lot of times the Roy is running up side being, but he's mixing up which side B he's doing. So Fitz gonna have to gonna have to try to commit to holding shield through that. Still, this percent lead is quite quite big, but they're about equal in terms of uh, factoring in the character's kill powers. Trying to get the back air off and just miss it. Would have killed and definitely taking the stock there because you know fire emblem characters and back air because they uh, yep. need it. Of course they do. Ooh. Okay, didn't get a combo off of it, but it did get him on stage off of ledge. So I still really like that bell. Nice reversal. Recognized him trying to come down and mash on you. Just don't let him. Pac-Man has a better recovery. Yes. That was very nice recognition from Fitz. <laughs> yeah, down airing Pac-Man doesn't work like that. <laughs> I, I don't like that it does sometimes, because you feel so cool for finally managing to spike this character. And then he just trampolines anyway, and then you feel sad. You just bounce him off the trampoline, which I feel yeah. like would do more damage, but... Um, 
the same thing happens with like Mega Man and stuff. I, I've gotten down airs on Mega Man out of their rush just for them to fall down back onto the same rush they just jumped off of and it still works. So some some characters you just can't really spike very easily and Pac-Man is one of them. So Fitz was able to save his stock for it and speaking of stocks, he's almost taking this Roy's just barely off on these bell combos every time but you know at least he's not getting punished for what he's whiffing for it so i'll take it more than it's better than what could be nice di getting out of the combo first to get missed the bell combo oh, <laughs> never mind <there> it is. <laughs> hitbox extension on the fire hydrant love to see it a little bit of pac-man shenaniganery yes. <laughs> so fitz does take the lead here lost two of his stocks but you know a lead is a lead so take those yep at the very least he has already done his job which is all we can really ask for so very nice showing from Fitz yep um looking at the like so I'm guessing still no idea characters um I can check here real quick of what we looked at um yeah so we, we scouted a little bit of ONU's characters um we did see the Roy um, apparently we've seen a Roy, Robin, Banjo, and and Puff, but their Puff seems to be a pretty consistent character. So, those are the four characters that we're expecting, although, again, this is Gluck, so it is only three players each round. So, that's what, we're, that's what we've seen for ONU, that doesn't mean that's what they're going to do, I mean... A variety of characters. That is a pretty, <laughs> pretty wide range there. So, not not extremely confident in the characters that, in what they're going to throw against us, but we we don't have and it's not like we have zero clue. I feel like the puff would probably be better off in the middle if they did decide to run the puff because mm -hmm. the puff is so light that and if they know like who we run, it's a bunch of Captain Falcon and I no, think <laughs> uh, we played this team at, uh, oh, well, okay. yeah, there you go. I was Congrats. gonna say we played this team at LAN and they tended to play the Jigglypuff second. And well, here we see it yet again, the Jigglypuff yep. second. Jigglypuff has come mm. out this Jigglypuff was a bit of a issue when we were at LAN. Uh, trying to deal with it was a little bit of a hassle for us trying to get through it. Generally, I had to. I, I dealt with the Pichu and also had to take a stock off the puff before I before I uh, dipped to give us that lead we needed. But we'll see what what we can do because now it's Fitz's turn to be the one to take that stock lead, and we're gonna see what he can do with it. It is gonna be quite difficult for Puff to get an edge guard on Pac-Man, which is definitely really good for Fitz since uh, Puff loves those edge guards so much. Well, Puff is like a very floaty. Yeah, she's very much an airborne fighter. Two two very ball-shaped opponents. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> that was not what I expected you to say there, but okay. But Fitz getting a lot of damage here. Oh, try. Oh, that was not the true version, but I love it nonetheless. Got the stock very early. Yeah. That was only at like 80 or something, but because it was so close to the side. So, very nice lead. No matter what, Fitz has already done more than what we could ask him to do. He's already taken the three and then another one. That's big. And he's only at 41%. Puff could kill, but it requires a pretty... It requires setup. Oh, that that Hydrant Water not doing him any favors. That... Does manage to escape that situation, though. That, that was a very, very risky situation to get put in. Nice, like it. I love Puff these recoveries. Not expecting these recoveries. Nice, dude. I love these recoveries from Fitz. He's mixing up his angles so much. That just what is the puff to do? Does trade some hits here. We are getting uh, closer and closer to the kill percent on the Pac-Man, but you know we've seen the puff die at this percent before, and yeah. puff. Pup is known for being a glass cannon. She dies pretty early. Fitz, all he really needs is one or two solid good hits, and it could still be another stock for him. Uh, still not being able to get out get out of Pup's advantage right now. Oh. That will do it. Nope. Not quite. We do yeah. get the low battery. <laughs> Uh-oh. Puff, uh, not looking too good here. 
Now, bo both characters are very much living on their last breaths, trying to make it out. That will do that it. That will do it. That will do it. <laughs> so, uh, Fitz, go change the controller or go charge it or something. I don't want that low battery screwing you over. Although, fun fact, don't play with it plugged in when you have the setting for it to connect on wired because actually people have done the tests and a wired pro controller has the most amount of input delay out of anything even the even the wireless it's so strange it is the most it has the most input delay out of anything expect it to be when it's wired to have the least amount exactly of input delay. <laughs> you would expect it to be faster but it's actually the slowest connection like even between gamecube controllers anything it is the slowest it is so strange yeah go charge that controller fits <laughs> but uh, didn't look like we swapped controllers already so i think we are good on that front like oh ah yes 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 this it. so i don't know if you've known this lore um but la i already mentioned how we played this team at lan and kind of what i did when i was at lan but here you're seeing what chris did at lan so, not to give any spoilers, so I'm not going to say the character's name just yet. Um, but what he did on this character was kind of disgusting. Each, yeah. each round, this character took five stocks. Which is evil. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I, I know Chris has kept that in his mind throughout so him selecting this character is not a massive surprise although um, we don't we don't get to see this character from chris very much i mean it is an older main older main <laughs> well to be fair main is like half the roster half for chris yes. but you know we don't we don't get to see this all that much and it's so fun to see it at times not very fun to play against no of course not because would want to play against because it's the problem is it's good so it's annoying to play against yes. <laughs> but Bam. glad to see it i mean chris being able to show off his character diversity is always nice he's so good at the entire roster but more often than not just being competitive in this game and in this format specifically you you kind of get punished for having that character variety but when it, and he has it so well that when he is able to use that sheer vastness of his character pool, and he's able to actually put it to use, it's so nice to see. All Battlefield is... Not aware of Nest. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's Sans. It's... Yeah. <laughs> um, if you know you know, he's playing Sans. Yes, <laughs> of course. Um, yeah. I'm not aware of this character's best stage selection. I don't really know either, especially against Puff, but I mean, I just love Small Battlefield, so you know what? I don't hate the choice. No matter what, it is pretty much the most neutral stage on the selection. So we will see what Chris's Ness can do. Love, love being able to see him use that diversity seer, so. Both very aerial fighters here, but the thing is, Ness, he, he obviously doesn't look like it. But this character's a sortie. He is. This character's moves are so disjointed, which is so good against Puff. Having those disjoints is so good against Puff. Nice drag down fair. So trying, gonna try to use these disjoints and just the sheer floatiness of Ness to try to basically do Puff's job, but with disjoints. Yeah, and uh, a little bit better because you know it's Ness. <laughs> Yeah, but duh, pretty much even here, although he is holding center stage, so that is very nice to see. Yeah, Chris is not giving up the center stage. He says, I am standing here, and you're going to have to come to me. I, I am not risking my advantage state to come at you, which, you know, I respect. I like to see it. Puff, a character that loves center stage so much, he's just saying, nah, I, I'm just not even going to give you the chance. I like that choice. A little bit of matchup knowledge there that I enjoy seeing. Um, he is, um, this is like the only time that he's gotten out of, 
um, advantage state right now. Um, now we're back to neutral because, of course, we are. Yep, but that back air, nice, does take the stock. My guess is that it uh, wasn't 100% ideal DI. It was pretty good, but, you know, Puff sometimes just be dying. She's she's quite literally a balloon. That will kill too, so. This Puff is keeping it pretty even. However, just Fitz getting that lead so early is so, so good. It was so critical having a lead against this Puff at LAN, and it's showing to be so critical here too. Especially with the Ness going into this, um, because this will be their next character after the beat Puff. So Puff has like the idea, like the ideal scenario for Puff is taking at least two stocks off of the Ness and going to Arthur. Oh yeah, for sure. But uh, not looking too good. Chris trying his best not to let it happen. We are at exactly even percents, but with the stock lead here, it is advantageous for us. Nice coverage, just, ooh, you chef it a little bit. and it, It's not quite cooking yet, but I love to see it, because that means, that means the creativity is flowing. He's looking for these options here, and even if they're not hitting, we still love to see it. It means you're experimenting. Ooh, ooh, I like that, love that. Using the magnet to stall out your jump, drag down up air, pivot grab. As far as I know, the pivot grab isn't true, but that is actually a combo, and being able to pull that out so cleanly. He's so, he's so, he's so clean at swapping characters. He's so good at being able to do that. Um, so we have no idea who they're going to throw on. X, correct? Um, potentially a Robin or a Banjo. At LAN, they played a Pichu and also a Robin. But when Chris was doing his character scouting, he didn't see the Pichu at all. So I would guess, just based on what we've seen before, it's, it might be the Robin. Apparently Chris did see a Banjo before, so... My guess is the Robin, basically, is what I'm saying. Yeah. However, I uh, wouldn't be terribly surprised to see a Banjo. It would be an interesting character to end on, though, I feel. Yeah. You don't really see Robin all that much. Mostly because they're just not very good. <laughs> <laughs> they're too slow to do really anything with. They are one of, if not, actually, are I think they are the slowest run speed in the game. Unless I'm terribly wrong on that. No, I think I'm just wrong. Never mind. I'm just talking I mean, at this we point. Can double check. I can. I just... I just talk anyway. But... Yeah, I mean, walk speed is obviously Incineroar. Is it still? Run speed is still Incineroar? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, Robin is the second slowest. Yeah, I couldn't remember whether uh, Robin was faster or slower in, like, run or walk speed. Couldn't remember which one, oh. but... Yeah, there's the Robin, so... Second slowest character in the game. Everyone point and laugh. But, uh... Got the projectiles to not really need it. However... Funny little down B... <laughs> the uh, the Robin can't rely on her projectiles all that much because Ness has that uh, PK magnet. However, uh, Robin was able to charge the Levin Sword during that. Um, wasn't really by choice; it just auto charges. But that is just a side effect of the crew battle format. So it's technically slight advantage, but we roll with it. It's not their fault. Um. Being able to take a little bit of damage, but still mm -hmm. trying to keep. Chris is uh, just kind of trying to force frame data on the Robin, which is definitely not a bad decision. I mean, as we talked about before, Robin is pretty slow. However, they they do still have a sword, and they do still can cover quite a bit of space with some of their options. So, trying to run it down mid and just shove your frame data down the Robin's throat is not gonna turn out the best in every situation. As we're seeing here with Chris having a little bit of a deficit, but working it back pretty pretty well. If Chris is just taking one stock and anything after is extra credit. As yep. Like and Chris having those two stocks to work with that is uh, definitely very solid to see. Interesting. I like the little, uh, little setup there. 
even if the Robin recovers here, yeah, that burnt about half of her Elwyn book, so either way, that was good. It was good for us. Yeah, watching the resource meters on Robin can be pretty important, but man, can it be difficult to watch sometimes. It's it's very interesting, I feel like, watching Robin's choices, and Robin doesn't have a lot of resources right now. Not really, no. Ah, uh, there it is! Ran out of Elwind, didn't get the second charge, and died for it. I think Chris just burned Elwind so well with those PK Thunders earlier, burned so much that they just didn't have the resources. Nom! That was about 20% uh, just gotten from that. So, uh, you know, we take it. Yep, Levin Sword. Levin Sword was designed to be the equivalent of smash attacks in the air. So, not very surprised that that's not killed there. And most sword characters, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this game. <laughs> yes, this, this game. First time we're seeing Nosferatu Ooh. come out. Um, Nosferatu is Robin's actually signature healing move. And it can be quite annoying sometimes. Definitely can be. Uh, it is a command grab, not a hit grab. So you can't, it does go through shield. Uh, I'm fairly sure on that, unless I'm just royally wrong. But I'm pretty sure it's that way. So, uh, Chris just trying to find his way in again. Like, this, this is kind of what I was talking about that forcing your frame data works when you're already in, but trying to get in can be pretty challenging. Not sure what this lag is right now. Uh, it's definitely definitely some Wi-Fi of all time, but Chris just trying to f work on through it and does manage to get the stock. That nest back throw, absolute signature kill option there. Yep, but this Robin is kind of living on a prayer right now. Best case scenario for ONU is that taking out um, nest literally quite soon. And also, but that doesn't mean that they don't have to deal and there with it is. their last one. Yep. So that, that was needed from ONU. So now, Chris getting quite a bit of extra credit there. Um, he, he was already walking in um, with a stock down. Yep. And got two stocks extra credit for his two. So an even trade and, you know, set us up very, very well. So now we have our last player coming in. We play, we led Fitz. Now we have Chris. So now we see who we throw in for the last one. They do only have to take one stock, but this Robin is uh, pretty capable. So do got to watch out for that. I feel like there's a fairly good chance of seeing some sort of K roll, but I could obviously we could see the link as well. Hmm. Those are our main two people we have left. The secret that we're hiding. Right? <laughs> um, well, that you know of, no. Uh. <laughs> I know of, yes, correct. For all I know, Chris could just waltz in here, drag my co co chair out. Yeah, we're, we're throwing you in, actually. Uh, yes. That, that would be entertaining. I, w I will admit, I would pop off to commentate that. <laughs> I, <But>. mean, <laughs> I mean, Chris has been saying that he is going to train me. It's going to be who? so funny. It is going to be. It's going to be awesome. It is going to be one of the training montages of all mm -hmm. time, as you would probably say. But uh, looks like uh, we're sadly not throwing you in. Sorry, uh, you might have to wait till next no, time I'm, to, to I'm play. I'm very good about but, that. Uh, <laughs> I'm very glad about that, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe later when we have our no. double header just after, no. which you guys should definitely tune in for. We have another double header. Ao, a little bit of a call out there. Tune in, tune in. We got it coming up, but you know. That comes after. We gotta keep focus on the game in front of us, and we have we one have stock left to take. But we have something interesting coming out. We do. However, <laughs> um, I don't know how much you've seen of this, but this isn't entirely out of the blue. I know he has been working on this for yeah, see, quite he, some time. He has been working on training this up, and you know what better chance to train up a character than playing it in comp and. When you have a three to one stock lead to work with, when you're that that gives you some breathing room to play with when you're trying to try out a new newer uh, 
newer roster additions. So, you know, yeah. I definitely don't hate the choice. Not a bad choice by any means. Of course, I have been seeing seeing him practice this a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that we're not throwing you in, but you know. I don't uh, want to be thrown in, so thank you. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hello. I see the message in chat. Hello. <laughs> um, we are having the stage bands. Yeah. Love this. The the most riveting part of any Smash Bros. crew battle, the stage bands, where you just you just have to sit here and look at it, look at us for about five minutes. So, sorry in advance, you know, but it is what it is. <laughs> but of course, like all Smash players know. If you don't know what you're going, you're back going to PS2. PS2. It makes the best <laughs> games. We're back, baby. We're running back. <laughs> so here we see a Roberto. This is Josh, so our K role player, if you guys don't know. And he has been training up this Rob for quite a while, been playing it in friendlies quite often, trying to get it up and ready for competitive standards. So wanting to give it a shot here. Definitely don't hate it. Does burn does burn the laser charge a little bit of a sportsmanship because I don't technically think he was required to burn that as it was just an auto charge. Yeah. A little bit of sportsmanship there. I I do like it, keeping it as fair as possible. Definitely, we like to try and keep it as fair as possible. Um, but on for right now, Robin is not in a very good spot right now. Yeah, as fair as possible seems to still be leading in Josh's favor with this percent, but Robin tacking on a little bit more with those gyros. But, you know, Josh knows how to use the gyro too and getting quite a bit of percent off of it. Double 11 sword up air though. Quite quite damaging. And right now going into this, um, mm -hmm. while Robin might take a stock off, that doesn't mean that they have an easy win on their hands. They still got two more stocks of He's and it's out of gas, so going to have to watch that. <clears throat> but is getting a lot of percent. Tries to go for the... Okay, yep, that F-tilt hit him. Yep, for sure. Don't check. Uh, you know, just working with what you're given. Trying to get some openings on this Robin. The Nair will open it up and get center stage. Now you got to watch out for the Levin Sword, but, you know, she doesn't have very many charges of that left. And there you go. Now is your window of opportunity. If you want to press this Robin, now is the time. No Levin Sword, low on resources. You're gonna push, you gotta do it now. However, Levin Sword is back right now, and that is going to take the first stock. There's you know, the window of opportunity. 111%. Robin is looking at a very uphill battle from here. Um, taking two stocks. There it is. Easy, and that's it. Yep. So the the Robin did, as I said, it did quite well. But because we had such a stock lead, having all three stocks on the Rob, he was able to, he had the the cushion to be able to take those more risks of playing a character that you're less familiar with to be able to learn it. So I do like that switch there. I mean, what better time do you have to try to train a new character than this? Going into a three stock lead and having one stock to yourself, or two stock lead, and going in with one stock, there's not yeah. much for the other person to do besides play their heart mm. out. So, we but, definitely saw that from that. But coming into it now, this is round two, so now the stocks are even. Yes. So, if we, if we want another lead like that to be able to do that same kind of thing, we gotta earn it again. So, we'll see what we can get done. Um, here we're, we're going back into the stage selection phase, so y'all got to look at us. I'm sorry about that one, but yeah, it's more interesting than the game screen. So as the as we decide what stages to go and who to lead, you know, player choice matters. So judging on the lack of just kind of movement on the character select screen, we might be full sending it? I mean, Don't know, I though. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, but also... I wouldn't hate the decision at all. Um, it would definitely be a decision, but not my least favorite. Fair. Uh, stage Dang. selections always take a little bit. 
gotta gotta go through the banning process. Gotta first you gotta decide who you're gonna lead. That's the decision that takes a while. Then that person has to decide what to ban. Then you gotta wait for the communication from the opponent team after they had just done the same decisions. Then you decide which stage to go from there, and all these decisions and time and communication is where all this time is going, so is a little bit of downtime there, but looks like we are actually staying. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. We're staying with the same player. Um, if you guys know who we play all the time, you might have a very good of idea of who is going in. I did reference this character earlier when I when we first saw the rock said hey you know they we normally see him playing this so if you're paying attention you know what's up so we will see and it looks like we do have the stage pick going to a nice simple battlefield got some funny music going he loves this he loves this yes. music pick chooses it all the time I have noticed <laughs> Just how I always pick Xenoblade music, he always picks this one. I mean, that's kind of what I expect. Chris Interesting! Mm -hmm. They're they're actually in, okay. So last round, th this is still the this is still the new round. However, the character swap on Josh's end back to his main of K rule, but then also leading the Robin instead of anchoring, so effectively getting the run back but with even stocks and on both on mains. So, you know, we, you can't get more of a run back than this. But no. Josh getting a very early lead to show it off. Um, trading hits there, but this is still negatively in the Robin's favor. Um, able to burn quite a bit of Elwyn multiple times over. Mm -hmm. Tra see. Trading with K. Rule is definitely advantageous for the K. Rule, so using this blunderbuss ledge trap it's so strong it's actually so difficult to get around yeah getting around that blunderbuss ledge trap so tacking on so much damage and as you mentioned burning so much elwin for it you're dead and, yep. even if this doesn't kill oh wow they were able to make it really yep they had to pick a very risky option and yeah. Carol tried to pull tried to attack that actually surprised me that they were able to make it back, but now they're right back to the blunder. What are you going to do? This has gotten... Basically, the blunderbuss is basically what take, took that stock. Like, yeah. from about 50 to 160 was almost all blunderbuss. you got to figure out a way around it. How are you going to do that? This yeah. has been giving Josh so much mileage. Um, that is one of the things that this Robin really needs to watch out for because they are getting called out a lot with not having Elwin, and that is a, that is very good playing from our team's part. However, that doesn't mean that the thing is, the thing is, it's not necessarily that they are just using Elwin or anything. It's getting burned yeah. by our team, which is such good play. Now we just have to start sealing the deal. We saw Chris do it earlier of being able to seal the deal with no Elwin, but now it is on Josh to do that and got to figure out a way around this blunderbuss. Yeah, and this is like, and I don't think this is anything against the Robin. This is just good play from our team. Yeah, absolutely not. This Robin is doing the best that they can and it's doing quite a lot. Just this blunderbuss ledge trap is just so strong. It is so difficult to get around. And was out of was out of up B, just came back. Yep, and that's what, what can you do? When your up B is a limited resource, <laughs> your recovery is a limited resource. It's uh, it's very similar to Hero. It it could be a real issue just not being able to recover. Uh, and not being able to recover is one of Robin's biggest problems. But Josh getting so much mileage, what a nice run up F tilt and not able to make it back. That blunderbuss put in overtime yes. in that game to be able to get us a two stock lead starting off right off the bat, looking very similar to last round, and I love to see it. Next match, I feel like going top would not be a very good choice. Or do I not very well know how Puff's matchup goes? Because 
be honest, I don't really play Smash that often, if my people can tell. Um. Um. No, I don't think you're wrong. The thing is here is that assuming they even stick with the same characters because we could see a character swap we did see a, we did at least see a fourth character when we were scouting so they definitely could swap but if assuming they don't their options here are either puff or roy if you go puff you're gonna die extremely quick you're gonna be have difficulty edge guarding unless in except for very certain situations because k rule can make it back from so far down you're it's going to be difficult to get to the sides of him but if you lead roy then you're um trusting that your puff can anchor it and you're trusting that your puff can anchor but roy also needs to get in yep. and josh has shown that he is very very comfortable using those projectiles to just keep everyone out and then the amount of armor that k Rule has once you finally get in it can be very difficult for Roy to do anything. I mean, just look at Crown. He throws out Crown. Yeah. That's a boomeranging projectile that also has super armor on it. So even if he jumps over it, tries to hit K. Rule, doesn't work. Punish for it. Yep. So what are your options here? Neither of them are very good. Now you just have to pick the lesser of two evils. What do you? What does Owen you think would be the best choice here? Myself going into it, I feel like, because obviously I don't know these players. I don't know if like last game was more rough for them and they can do like extremely well or like anything. I don't know that. I'm seeing this as their average gameplay. Yeah. And I still feel like in the situation, I'd probably say I'd have to lead with it just because I can die so quickly and K rule just so much damage. So, yeah. like, one hit and Puff is one third of the way to kill percent. Well, we're gonna find out here real soon. Looks like it is the Roy here that uh, Josh is gonna have to face with a two stock lead. We'll see if he can do it. You know, Roy, not an unfamiliar character to us at all, so we will see what he can do. There you go. All right. Great. Yep, and right to the projectile gameplay. Just like I said, trying to keep the Roy away. Roy is such a close-range fighter that just you can keep him out. You will be doing A-OK. -okay. So not quite being successful in it yet, but, you know, this percent, at this point, it's K rule. This percent doesn't matter. Yep, 22% already taken. First thing, 77% though. Um, a li almost over halfway to kill percentage right here. One good back air would definitely make some leeway. Yeah, K. Rule does do so much damage and such high kill potential. It's it's m more than even here. And yep, that that was the game changer that I didn't mention. <laughs> that I purposely didn't say, just yep. in case we had a little had a little listener. K. Rule is really good against Roy Upbe. He has not only a super armor Nair that can just clank with it, he also has a counter. Yep. But does get the Jair to seal the stock. 50% extra credit. Definitely nothing to sneeze at, especially on K roll. But, you know, that is a stock down on Josh. Yep. But. This is one thing with Roy that I was more so saying. Because I feel like if we were in Huff, Huff would be taking it a lot more cautiously. And whether or not they last one stock or not would not be the concern. It would be killing that would be more of the concern. Yeah. Puff trying to get in. Getting in is the issue with both of those characters against K. Rule. And Roy, I think, is better, but he should be dead here. Nice tech, though. Does manage to survive that situation. There's getting the crown armor. And dead. Goodbye. Yep. Um, one thing with Puff especially is that Puff would have a harder time killing, whereas Roy does have those abilities to kill. Yeah, but he needs to be able to survive to kill, and yep. wow, Josh looking for the kill at the first opportunity. That is one of my favorite things watching Josh. He sees you come off of that Halo platform, and his immediate thought is how to kill you. Don't, um, don't let Josh cook, because apparently he does not want to burn anything. 
he does not want a scrap of it to be slightly darker. Letting some of our letting some of our players cook is some of the worst decisions you can make because once we start cooking, oh man, it is scrumptious. And yep. that nair, you know what else is scrumptious? This stock lead, absolutely man. massive with Josh here. I mean, we thought the stock lead in the last round was good. Well, here's Josh showing us up, saying, you know, how about a four stock lead instead? We are now officially an entire player ahead, which is so huge. It is huge, and that is um, doting for um, <clears throat> O and U. Yeah, but absolutely. We got some cheers going on in the chat for Valpo. It's looking really good. It's looking very strong here, so... I. I, th I think we can expect the outcome, but you know, Owen, you might have something to say about it. We've had issues with this puff before. Assuming it is the puff, uh, that's just my guess, is that seems to be their third player, so. I mean, we'll see. And we, and we have seen crazier things before by even Definitely our have. own players, so. Looks like Smash fills the pick. You know, I actually don't hate this from this puff. Squishing the stage down makes getting in much easier because you just simply have less space that you have to go through the only caveats at this is that it means those projectiles now cover more of the stage just by sheer percentage yep. and carol does have a lot of armor on these options that cover a lot of space so it, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword here so we're going to see what the puff can do does only have to take one stock off the K roll. So ideally for this puff, they manage to scrape by this stock without losing one of their own. There is other concerns for this puff though, because of how small the stage is. Not only is there the projectiles, but it will be a lot easier for Puff. Um, assuming that they don't take the stock quickly. That's yeah. Puff is absolutely going to die much earlier. However, shrinking the stage is still better for Puff because Puff's going to die quickly anyway. So at the very least, it makes it so the K rule dies sooner as well. That's why you generally don't see Kalos versus Heavies. Um, so just th this Puff has got to take this stock without losing one of their own. And Josh almost didn't let that happen. That back air probably would have killed. Getting his crown back though, which is not good for the puff right now. Puff yeah. trying to just play it very neutral. Um, Josh right. just playing so cautiously, just trying to give him as little opening as possible. If he hit that up air, this puff was eviscerating. Yeah, it, it was dead. <laughs> the, but, the puff was dead. That, that is dead. Sure you can. That there is it dead. is. <laughs> and there is a stock lead. So no matter what. This puff will have to go into our second player with at least a one stock deficit. So, and mind you, we haven't even seen Fitz yet. This is our first fighter. Haven't even seen Fitz, haven't even seen Chris yet. Josh putting in absolute overtime right now, but this should be it. Yep. Th those were the situations that's dangerous for K rule being horizontal to puff. Being horizontal with puff off stage is terrifying for any character, but K rule especially, it is very devastating. So, understandable losing the stock there, but it doesn't matter. He got one too, which was already more than we could ask for, judging on what the matches prior looked like. I mean, like, looking into this, the Puff is probably a little upset because that was just so close to him just killing him because it may have looked like there was a lot of leeway between those times but 40 percent on k Ru against k rule is just two hits yeah it, it was combo. it was very well played by that puff they were they were finding their openings pretty well josh was struggling quite a bit but you know that that's honestly my issue of heavies you're winning 85 percent of the game ah shucks you had to be winning 90 percent you lose so they found they found a lot of good openings, just not quite enough. I mean, it is just kind of part of the heavy aspect. I mean, they don't win very many neutrals, but when they do, it's devastating. So Josh just won enough to be able to make it work. So our second player coming in 
with already a one stock lead on their last fighter. So is he, mess is he messing with us? No. Coming in, or is he just no, really uh, debating? No, Chris. It? Uh, sorry, not Chris. Cr uh, Chris. My my apologies. <laughs> Don't Chris cover that Fitz, character. It's fine. But Fitz. Um, which spoiler alert, we're playing Fitz. It's not that much of a spoiler because of what I'm about to say is that Fitz has also a really wide character pool. They have played a lot of characters throughout the years. So obviously we're most familiar with their Pac-Man, but they, they played a lot of other ones. They, they had a hero for a while, which I enjoyed watching. You um, know they had a Sephiroth for a while. They had a well. duck hunt. Um, I don't, think they tried Sephiroth much. I could just simply be mis misremembering. I also might be thinking of somebody else who's trying Sephiroth. Um, but they've also been playing a lot of Aegis recently. I think they had a little bit of... Um, they've been trying out a lot of characters, but going with the safe option, going with the strongest, I do like the choice. You know, you have so much of a lead. You know, it, uh, as much as we talk about that it's nice to be able to throw in your new characters, sometimes you just want to play it safe. I do not dislike this choice. Getting a little bit of a run back here with the ball-shaped opponents. However, with Fitz, they do um, really like playing Pac-Man. I feel like they find it very fun by watching them play um, and just how they approach most situations. I, I think the I mean they've been branching out quite a bit I think they've kind of just been getting a bit bored of the same options which happens all the time so not too big of a question but his pac-man is just so solid and going into this Puff is kind of struggling so far with even percents but with Fitz's stock lead exactly that's Puff the big thing the Puff can't afford to allow it to be even here. So even though it's even, it is so much in Fitz's favor. Because e even if you discard the player behind Fitz as well, you have to look at it as it's even percent. And yes, we did just start the game, but this Puff is a stock down. And like, you know, you know the vibes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, Puff going for a little bit of a deep edge guard. That, that is Puff's MO. Uh, not able to get it. Fitz avoiding it so well, but not quite able to avoid that back air. Pac Man is such a difficult character to edge guard, and when edge guarding is your primary source of kills, like with Puff, it can be so challenging. And um, we've seen that several times. <sighs> several places where you figure that Fitz would be dead, but they just aren't, and the Puff is taking a lot of damage. Like the, the Puff cannot afford for it to be this even. Again, even with even, can't forget about the fighter behind Fitz. And all this percent, even if Fitz loses the stock, and even if Fitz loses the next stock, all this percent means that just a few stray hits per stock is gonna gonna end up netting a stock off of the puff. Why why no back air? Why no up air? Ugh. <laughs> uh, this game's mul this game's multi hits aren't functional. They just aren't. The puff trying to land with a drill. He fell out of it because he was at zero and then just killed him for it. You know, I love the recognition. I love understanding that you had a kill there. Just, man. <laughs> just, uh, Smash Bros. multi-hits. I feel you there. My character is mainly multi-hits. I feel that. My <laughs> character's a little bit broken. Yeah, not and not in the good way. <laughs> But you know, you know what isn't broken in a bad way? Fitz's Pac-Man gameplay. This is very solid. Doing so much damage to this Puff. I mean, he took the 3.5 from the drill when he up smashed him. And that was the first time he had been hit since then. And he has tacked on so much percent on this Puff. And this Puff has had to do several different avoiding strategies for that bell, which is very deadly. Especially mm -hmm. seeing as we have 
especially since we have seen some of Fitz's combos with that bell. Barely missing that puff right there. Just a nice time shield on their part. Yeah, like we, we we talked about this a little bit last stock, and it's even more prevalent this stock since the percentages aren't even. But like at this point, even if this puff just effectively only takes like two stray hits a stock, that's probably enough to kill. Yep. And I mean, this is the puff's last stock, and so he he's got to get a lot done with this one stock here. And the, this key is going to be pretty important. It covers a lot of horizontal space. And just playing it really safe from the puff, but unfortunately, Fitz is knowing that the Jigglypuff has to take a like take into advantage and has to approach him first, mm -hmm. just because of the situation. Wasting key from puff, the puff. The puff is very much a. Uh, it's more generally a fairly passive character of you play pretty passive you find your openings from there but the thing is they're down a stock and you know up a stock you know the vibes Fitz ain't approaching he's playing this just just as he should so trying to play a very pat oh wow okay did he just walk up slowly and f smash yes <laughs> yes yes he did he, you know, Fitz is so, so good at getting those just F smashes. He just knows when you're going to drop shield. It's so annoying to play against. He just knows. But, you know, that that is our ONU match. And as we said, we do have a doubleheader to get to. So sadly have to wrap this up a little quick. So incred incredibly well played from Valpo. Had such a stock lead. Bo both well played from ONU too, but Valpo being able to take the 2-0 win. But we will see you in a short bit of time, so we're not going to sign off just yet, so we'll see you then. Uh, tune in. <laughs>